All right, joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is one of the ladies that's going to be in the co-main event of Bellator 186 as she is going to fight for the inaugural flyweight title is Emily Ducote. Emily, I appreciate the time. Of course, everyone knows this is a rematch. What is the biggest thing you took away from your first fight with uh, Alimale? Um, really, I just learned um, a few more mental things. It was less about physical and was more about mental. You know, before the fight, I hadn't fought anybody that I had uh, questioned my level of, you know, level of fighting on. And when I was fighting her, I had questioned that. So um, after that fight, I just kind of realized, hey, I'm on this level um, and I deserve to be in this division. Was it questioning it during the fight or before the fight? Uh, it was before the fight. You know, she's got a big following and uh, heavy promoting and stuff like that. So I um, had just questioned myself, you know, a little bit about it. Was a little hesitant and uh, got in there. And by the by the end of the fight, I had realized, hey, um, you know, it's a close fight, and um, I am on this level. And I uh, really just took that away from the fight. How many times have you watched that fight? I watch it every once in a while, <laughs> probably a good handful of times. Is it one of those things where are you at this point? Like I just, you know, I know what happened in the fight. There's no reason to go back toward it and kind of not having that looking in the past type feeling and looking at the future. Right. Yeah. With all of my fights, um, immediately after I try to learn as much as possible, you know, win or lose, see what happens, see what I um, could have done better or, should have done less of and so once we as a team look at that fight and learn the lessons um, we leave it in the past it's not something that I dwell on um, I just try to learn from it and you know move on was it one of those things that did you think the rematch would happen this quickly I mean it was only you know 11 months ago literally to the day when this fight's going to take place I mean did you think that it would be that quick that Bellator would go back to this fight uh, no, I was actually kind of surprised um, when they offered this. I knew we would probably eventually rematch, but um, I had figured they would put her, you know, obviously her versus somebody for the title and, you know, maybe get our rematch later. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, the, it's happening now. <laughs> you know, one of the cliches that we, that we hear in the fight game in terms of a rematch is the fighter that – lost the first fight, ultimately really has the advantage heading into the second fight because they realize the mistakes they made in the first fight. They know the corrections that they have to make to, to get the victory in the second fight. Uh, is that kind of, it, it, do you feel that that maybe is one of your biggest advantages heading into this one? Um, I know how I am after I fight and I try to learn and, you know, and grow. So I always assume that other fighters are the same. So, you know, it's been almost a year, like you said, 11 months. And uh, I'm assuming she's changed and evolved and adapted as well. So um, I don't know if I'm going to say it's an advantage, but uh, you know, I think we've both changed and we're so, you know, more to this fight than the last fight. I was looking on your Instagram uh, feed and I noticed that uh, Master Laborio was, was just, uh, you got a chance to, to work with him. Um, obviously everyone knows uh, about his credentials, but for you, what was your biggest takeaway of just being around him and getting some work in with him? He's amazing. Uh, me and my coach are really big fans of him. Uh, I've known him since I was an amateur. Um, so he comes down here every once in a while and, uh, it was really great timing that he was able to come, you know, this close to my fight and, um, it was just awesome. He knows so much stuff and uh, has a lot of experience you know, putting jujitsu into the into the MMA world. So um, it was awesome. The relationship between the fire and the coach, they, they always talk about that. What, what's the relationship like with you and your coach uh, in the training room and then also outside the training room? Is it one of those things that you, you just know how to kind of, you know, separate that so uh, maybe, uh, you know, things that happen in the, in the room don't kind of happen in real life? Yeah, um, I've been with my coach for uh, over three years now. And so he was with me in my corner for my very first fight, and uh, he'll be with me into my last fight. He, I've learned, no matter if I want to admit it or not, he's always right. Um, Every situation where he's told me to do something, eat this, don't eat that, do this workout, don't do that, 
um, it, he's always been right. So I've learned not to question anything that he says. And in camp, you know, when he makes my diet or does my conditioning or, you know, makes the overall plan for the fight, I don't question it. Whatever he tells me, I do. And so um, we've got a really great um, relationship from that. So, um, you know, that's the, probably <laughs> the best way to describe it. <laughs> You know, they, they always talk about sacrifices you have to make to, to be a fighter. Uh, for you, what, what's the biggest sacrifice you've had to make? Um, my whole family is in California. I, a lot of people forget, am from San Jose. And so, you know, my whole family's out there. And I moved to Oklahoma, um, you know, like five years ago. So I've been here. And um, it's hard having to miss family events or family birthdays or holidays and stuff like that. And uh, that's probably the the hardest part is just not being able to be there, you know, when I'd like to be there with them. But um, what's so awesome about fighting is that um, my family's a part of it. And so when I fight, I normally have somebody coming to watch one of my family members, or something like that. And so, you know, I do get, I do miss a lot of family events and stuff like that, but when it's time to fight, they understand. And um, I'm fortunate to have somebody come out and watch and be with me that week. When you made the decision that you were going to be a a fighter, what did your family think of it? And and were they shocked? Um, no, probably not shocked. I probably hopeful that I wasn't going to do it. Uh, my mom is a nurse and is kind of concerned with, you know, the health side of it. Uh, my dad supports me in anything. And, you know, my grandparents probably saw it coming. Uh, we used to watch fights and, um, you know, they always told me that I would be here and uh, I didn't believe it until it happened, but they knew it all along. And so they're not surprised at all. My grandma's, you know, very supportive. She goes to all my fights and, um, uh, both my grandma and grandpa will be there next week. In terms of, I think, you know, really the storyline behind this fight is making history. And, uh, you know, last week, Alimule had said, you know, the winner of this fight is going to be the best, you know, female 125 pound fighter in the world. Now, I think you know that there's going to be people that are fans of MMA that'll say, no, the best 125 is ultimately going to be who wins the UFC title one month later. What, what would you say to those people who don't believe the winner of this fight is the best 125-pound fighter? Um, there's a lot of organizations and a lot of girls that fight. So, you know, the debate of which organization or which, you know, girl or whatever, um, you know, it's up for debate. And so some people are going to feel that way and some people are going to feel that the tour we'll have the best 125 girls. Um, to me, that's not very important if they think, you know, the UFC is higher or whatever. Um, what's important to me is being a part of history and fighting for this belt. And um, either way, um, Bellator has some of the best 125ers in the world. So, you know, people's opinions are always going to be different. But, um, you know, I really feel like Bellator has some high-level girls. Is it ultimately one of those things that you just don't worry about because it's something you can't control? Yeah, so I've learned, you know, more in the past year since, you know, being with Bellator that everybody wants to hop on and everybody wants to make a comment or say something. And so you have to realize what's who is important, who is not, and, you know, then judge what they're saying is if it's important or not. And to me, those type of comments or those type of things, those are not important to me. I'm sure you've had to think about how you get this this fight and get the victory and Scott Coker putting the belt around your waist. Have you even thought about, um, you know, what you're going to do to celebrate? Is it just immediately just go over uh, you know, to your grandmother and maybe give her the belt after the fight's over? I haven't thought too much about what exactly I'm going to do after, but... Um... Yeah, I really hope that they're able to be cage side, and um, they're a big, big part of my fight career, and so I'd love to see them right after. Yeah, Bellator's got to put them cage side, right? I would hope so. <laughs> they did last time, so I'm hoping they do again. 
But, of course, this is going to be the co-main event of Bellator 186 come on Friday night, November the 3rd. Of course, uh, probably have a title in the main event. And we I really appreciate the time. Let all my listeners know where they can follow you out on social media. I'm mostly active on Instagram, and it's emdakoti one And uh, like I said, that's where I'm most active.